Question four. So what I'm going to do here, first step, is I'm going to rewrite this, but using index powers. So I've got a root, so that's to the power of a half, and it's one over, so it's minus a half. So let's just do that first of all. So here we go. Right. Now I'm going to think about the expansion, OK? I only need the first three terms. So this is what I tend to do. Now, I know we can't do minus a half C0, but we'll think about what that is in just a moment. So all I'm doing is I'm just thinking, what do I actually, how do I expand these normally? Um, so I'm doing exactly the same thing as if I had sort of 4 plus x to the power of 3 or something like that. So we're doing exactly the same thing. Um, I got minus x to the power of 0. Go back, let's worry about what these are in a minute. Don't worry about them for a moment. Let's just fill the rest in. So the next one's going to be minus a half c1. And then after that, it'd be minus a half c2. Yes, we, you know, if you try and put them into your calculator, it won't work. But we'll think about that in just a moment, about what that actually gives us. So 4. So now we drop this by a power of, of 1. So that now becomes minus 3 over 2. And then 4 minus 5 over 2. And then let's just multiply all of these. we got minus x to the 1 minus x to the 2. Right, let's go through and let's fill in all of the easy bits first of all. Well, anything C0 is 1. So let's put that in. There we go. 4 to the minus a half. That's just 1 over 4 to the half. I guess, of course, I know it's 1 over 2. And then I'm going to multiply that by 1. So that's that bit there is a half. So that top line is just a half. Now let's have a little think about this line. Well, I'll do this one first. I'll leave, I'm just going to leave that for a second, these two here. I'll have a little think about that in a minute. So fill in all of the easy things. So we've got minus x there, obviously to the power of 1. And then we're going to have 1 over 8. Let's do the next line as well. So we're going to have x squared. And this one is 1 over 32. Right. Now we need to think about what these guys are just here. Well, first of all, let's think about what minus a half C1 actually mean so you need to know the um your sort of like you see your combination formula so how does it go well you have the the top number factorial divided by this number take away this number factorial so minus a half take away one factorial yes of course you can actually do that and then that'll be multiplied by one factorial. OK, again, so what does that mean? Well, minus a half factorial, that means minus a half times minus three over two times minus five over two, etc. Well, just think about how these two guys here go together. I'm dividing minus a half times minus three over two factorial. Think about it like this. So times minus 3 over 2 factorial. Well, this is minus 3 over 2 factorial and, and multiplying by 1 as well. They're just going to cancel each other out. So therefore, this one here just must be minus a half. Let's just have a quick look at this one. Just a quick double check to make sure that you understand what we're doing. So... Let's, so on the top, it'd be minus a half factorial. And then it's minus a half take away two factorial and multiply by two factorial there as well. So let's have a little think. Think about what minus a half factorial means. Minus a half factorial actually means minus a half multiplied by minus three over two multiply by minus 5 over 2 factorial. Hey, wait a minute. What's this? That means 
minus 5 over 2 factorial. And divide 2 factorial is just 2. So they're going to cancel. So I'm left with this divided by 2, which is going to give you, that's going to give you uh, 3 over 8. Let's think about that for a moment. 3 over 8. Right. Piece all this together, and that's 1 over 16 x, a double negative there, and then 3, 2, 5, 6, x squared. So that's the first three terms just there. Put a little plus, I'd probably write that out again in one line, okay? Right, now part B. Now part B, let's just, just have a little look to see what it's saying here. So it's saying the expansion can be used to find an approximation for root 2. We can use different values of x okay so it says without actually working anything out state given a region which of these three values of x should be uh should be used which of the three values of x oh sorry should not be used whoops okay misread that right so which one cannot be used well we need to think about um how when our uh when this is going to be valid so when it's going to be valid Let's here we're up just doing part B. The modulus of x needs to be less than p over q. Now, if you think about it written in this form, okay? So that's just going to be the modulus of x needs to be less than 4 over minus 1. So in other words, the modulus of x needs to be less than Four. Modulus of x needs to be less than four. Well, this one isn't. Okay? So that one is the one that cannot be used. And then part two. So we've just done part one. And part two. Well, which one's going to be the best answer out of these two here? Because they both seem to be valid functions. Well, this one's going to be the best one here because it's closest to zero. In other words, it's like furthest away from, from where like your cutoff point is in terms of whether it's going to be valid or not. So this one, and if you just say because it's closest to zero, and then that'd be fine. I'd give you all the marks there. 